<clears throat> all all we've done so far in terms of the um, in terms of the ranges. Okay, great. All, all we got in terms of the ranges, right, is we traded right up to the from the bottom of the range, right? And I mentioned before that it's very common for us to come down, right, break the bottom of the range, and then pop back in. You see this on all time frames. You see it on. <clears throat> and then what does it do once we trap these traders below? Is it pushes us right back, right back up to the top, right? Sometimes we'll come up and pop back up again and then do the dance the other way, right? Not necessarily with the speed that we did it over the last two days, but certainly a possibility. <clears throat> um, after I'm done with the basic scenarios, I'll go through and show an example where what it looks like when we break out versus what it looks like when we get capped at the top of these moves, right? <clears throat> so going into the um, going through the scenarios for the day, okay, so we have a bit of a, of a cluster where we're trading this morning. So we're trading right at the top, which puts us at 30, uh, right against this uh, Globex high that we're at, right? I have um, the first resistance right here, 1840, which is the top of the zone, right? Uh, if we travel from 37, the, the only issue I'm going to have with this zone, right, is if we travel, we'll be above Globex highs, and we won't have much of a rotation if we go straight into it, right? We open drive higher. I want when I'm entering these zones, at least a six-point rotation. And that helps me determine where where within the zone I'm going to get location. If I travel six points prior to the zone, right, then as soon as I get to the zone, the front of the zone is just a fine entry. However, if six points puts us at the middle or the back, that's where I'll wait to take my, uh, to take my shot, right? <clears throat> okay, so that being said, um, the normal status, right, we have... Um, You'll notice that this zone, there's a couple changes, right? This zone is extra wide. And the reason for that is we have gap fill right in the middle. We have the high of the day from yesterday uh, right here. And then Globex Low uh, came in right here. So it created an extra wide zone, 1831.50 to 1834 and a quarter. Normally it would be 1832 and a quarter. So again, how would I figure out where I want to enter this zone? Well, the stop is still two points behind the zone if we come in from on top, right? So I'll look for a six-point uh, rotation. So that means if 37, right, um, 37 and three-quarters is the top, that means I'm looking all the way at the back of this zone as my first entry. If we break and then come back below and push down, I might be able to take it earlier than that. So a couple caveats of that, right? First of all, if we break above and then we reject and come back below, it's a failed break from overnight highs. So you have the potential potential for a trap trade there. Now, when I mentioned the trap trade, it's an aggressive trade, just so you know, right? There's no rotation, and the risk is that we come up and set a new high, or we simply come up for a retest and a marginal new high and then break back down. So if you're taking these trades, or if I'm saying, hey, I'm taking the trap trade, just realize... The risk is higher on the trade. It's a harder setup, okay? So the easiest setup is the first time into the zone, looking for a rotation, looking for a two-point rotation lower, and then leaving your trailers. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. My voice is going on me. I'm going to do my best I can. Leaving the trailers, right, and then adjusting your stops accordingly, whether it's net break-even or if it's actually break-even to the point of entry, okay? So possible scenarios. As NQ is pushing new highs right now, and I imagine ES will by the time we get to the open, right? It's likely, from what I can tell, that we're going to open above what was Globex highs till right above the right before. So, <clears throat> if we open in this zone up here, we, we push to 1839 by the open, right? A couple things have to happen for me in terms of scenarios. We could reject. Half gap at that point, 1833 to 1839 would be six points, so... Um, three-point rotation would put me right at 1836, right? Which would make sense if we're going to come back in and test what was this morning's pre-market resistance, right? Maybe overshoot it a drop and then push back up, right? So the issue is everything from here all the way down to here is essentially a zone, right? Which is rare for us, but that's exactly what we're, what we're facing. So you'll have to make a decision 
as to whether you want to wait for it to see if it'll push all the way back um, or if you want to take it right at the test of Globex highs. How will I determine whether I want to take this trade here, right? Well, if we push up from, I'll need it to push up all the way to 43, right? Get resistance from here and then roll back down for a test in order for me to be able to take this trade. Otherwise, I'm going to wait for it to get back here and I may have no trade out of the gate, right? <clears throat> so that scenario would look like this if we open up. It would be gap above, right? And then open drive higher is certainly a possibility. What are going to be the signs of an open drive higher? First of all, we tend to, not always, but one of the signs is the first three five-minute bars, we tend to get higher highs on each bar, and the, pre, and the, and the prior bar's low tends to not be uh, challenged or tested, right? <clears throat> Another sign of an open drive higher, right, like yesterday on NQ, if you look, the first five-minute bar is also the low bar of the day. It's never penetrated, right? <clears throat> If this scenario takes place, right, and we have no rotations like it we had yesterday, the day will essentially go like this. Open drive higher, and then we will drift up into initial resistance. I would expect responsive sellers the first time into this area, right? Uh, and with the proper rotation, I will take this trade. If we look a little bit higher, right, if we break above here, we have new highs. And if you'll notice on the chart, I've left plenty of room for this thing to break because there's a good chance if we break to new highs, there will be a rush of cash off the sidelines to drive this thing up. Um, I could have created some zones in between, but I'm going to leave uh, plenty of room for this thing to move higher before I take a shot at it. I'd rather miss the trade or <clears throat> another scenario there, right? How would I know uh, where the short's going to take place? If we open drive like we have here, we move higher, and then we come back in and we break back below, right? I wouldn't want to see it trade back above here, but that would essentially set a trap trade with late buyers up here, and we could easily push back down into the zone. And if we were to reverse, right, and get below the opening print, could push us back into yesterday's range, okay? So that's a long shot. I certainly wouldn't bet on it given the environment that we have, but we've had two days of really big range, right? So if we had another 15 point, 15 point range, it would be easy to get back conceivably to the top of yesterday's range and even fall into it. Not saying that will happen, but I certainly have my heads up for it. What would give me a clue that this is a possibility? First of all, at highs, right? Since I have no zones here, I'm just projecting possible exhaustion points. Um, I would look for tick divergence to guide me. Um, if you want to take a trade prior to the zone above, it would be aggressive and I would make sure you've got a really good extension before you take that trade. I will be looking for patterns to give me an indication that we're uh, running out of juice up here. But again, any trade you take up here would be very aggressive. <clears throat> Let's talk about the downside scenario for a moment, right? So um, if we open what I assume will be this 1839 area, uh, we can essentially, this will be a, become a minor support or just pre-market support. I don't know that I would any longer uh, consider a trade here. If we can if we can push up, they're trying to do it right now, right? So we open here at 1839, and we're unable to push past this 1841 area. Um, ha again, I would look for half gap and a possibility of it coming in like this and then rejecting back up, and then this becomes the test here as to whether we can get over this zone. Or choice two is complete gap, and then a push back up. Remember, we don't have any weakness, or you can't really say the market's weak, until one of two things happens. We either trade below the gap fill and hold key, right? Because we can also do option three where we come into this zone and then we reject back up. We want to see it hold below, right? <clears throat> also, if it falls back into this range, right? For in order for longs to get any extension back to the upside, we very quickly need to clear yesterday's highs. If we're unable to do that, then there becomes a very real possibility, right, that we come in, unable to clear back above the highs, and then we test lower. If we test lower, we'll adjust the chart there. So these are just the scenarios I'm looking at, right? Or I'm looking to identify. Um, 
I'm going to assume the open in 1839, fail to get above, come in, half gap, full gap, um, fail to get back above the highs. We have a trap trade from all these people up here, right? And then I would look for a beautiful rotation down to the white zone, hopefully, right? So if you look at this stretch, this is from 1832, right, all the way down to 1824. What's the reason for that? All of this area was really poorly auctioned in here. <clears throat> so we're going to do one of two things. We're either going to come behind this zone and get quickly rejected back in and then back above, or we're going to fall all the way through, re-auction all the way down to the white zone, and I would expect to find responsive buyers there, right, to push us back up. My friend uh, and client Raj pointed out very accurately that um, this is options expiration week, and Raj, correct me if I'm wrong, buddy. Um, I believe you uh, mentioned that um, the expiration, the majority of the contracts were sitting between 1838 and 1840. Maybe it was 1832 and 1840. That that's probably the area they're going to try to take it out at. Uh, 1830 to 1850. Okay. So it would make sense that somewhere in that, that 1830 to 1850 range, that they're going to try to get expiration somewhere in that 20 points, right? <clears throat> Which would mean that they're going to try to defend anything below and anything above and push it back into that zone. So, again, I would expect to see responsive buyers down at 1822 for a push back up towards 18, into the 1830s, right? Um, we've had two days. We've had two days, one day of long liquidation and one day of open drive up with no rotation, right? So I usually look for balance the day after that, but you got to kind of give a tip of the hat that buyers had control going into the close. <clears throat> Until I see us trade back into the range, right, I'm not going to assume balance. I'm going to assume continued drive higher. Um, and if we can get above the old highs up here, which is a big drive, right? You got to consider the normal range. If we close at 1833, 1845 is going to put us uh, 12 points up. Wow, math is just not my hot spot, uh, especially when I'm not feeling well uh, combined with the dyslexia. But that's going to put us up 12 points. That would be an average day, right, or, or an average uh, potential range, right? And it wouldn't be unusual, again, to see us. This pattern has become very common, right, where we break out. We have failed extension, and then we push back into the range. And it doesn't have to be a big push all the way back down, but it wouldn't be surprised to see us close at or below prior resistance. Okay, so that's those are what I'm looking for. Again, my test at the open, half gap and gap fill. The other thing that I want to mention, I put out that video yesterday regarding uh, capital management on trend day up. Most of my trades tend to work within a 25-minute period of time. Okay. If I can't get it to work in 25 minutes, I have three options. <clears throat> and this depends on what risk management you're willing to take. Option one, leave the stop as is and, and shoot for the target, right? Option two, simply close the trade at 25 minutes. It's done. You didn't reach your objective. It helps keep losses low. And you know the majority of the time you can hit your two-point scale within that period of time, except when it gets really slow in August, you need to extend it out, right? Uh, or option three, uh, bring up to net break even if you were above where you entered the trade for whatever reason, right? And just if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And um, it depends on which way you want to lean, right? Do you want to be more towards the risk side and get is, is gaining the potential profit more important to you than protecting your downside? To me, most of the time, uh, particularly given my last two days, uh, protecting my profit and protecting my capital is going to be more important than attaining my target because I know I'll get easy trades coming up down the road. I don't have to press my edge, right? So that's my take on that, and there's a full video on it if you want to see it. It's posted on the blog. <clears throat> Let's go look at NQ really quick. So on NQ, and by the way, we need to adjust 1838 and a quarter is now the uh, Globex high, and we're just below that resistance uh, the projected resistance point that I had right up in here. So you may just simply want to extend this zone right here down um, three ticks to account for the Globex high, right? Or we may be there by the time we open. Looking over on NQ, 
And by the way, to the guys I send, uh, Trade Station guys, I apologize. I forgot to shoot out Alan. I'll shoot this out to you in just one second here. And then I'll go over and, and look at the uh, balance. Um, <clears throat> so on NQ, uh, looks like we are at 3589, right? So we're still in this resistance zone. Globex high. We have two scenarios that I want to see. The ranges for the last two days on NQ have been 50 points. So it's only natural to go up and look 50 points away from wherever we open. Oh, excuse me, 50 points from the close, 50 points from the low. I would mark that off. I think the other day we were down 60 some odd points, right? And really, given the strength that the NQ has had over the last couple of days, I would look <clears throat> uh, really to this zone up here to see if we can get a good stretch before. Uh, getting aggressive on the short side that's this is the area i want and i will want to see some rotations before i take a short up here because the nq was relentless yesterday it was just pretty much a straight line up right and there was no rotation again signs of trend day up there the first five minute bar won't be violated the first low won't be violated right um we won't be able to attain gap fill uh, and in this case uh let's see Half of, you need to calculate whatever half of, I imagine will be 3590 off of the open, right? And we have uh, 3574. So half of that brings us roughly right here. So again, the measures half gap, gap fill, and the first five minute bar combined with the first three bars, right? The first three bars look like this, right? With higher highs on each one, unable to penetrate the low of the prior bar. We're going to assume open drive up until I'm proven otherwise. In this case, when we're heading towards the highs of, or, or as an ES or an NQ, if we're making new highs, right, standing in the way and calling a top is a difficult job. An easier pattern to trade in that is this right here, where you get a test, a break, a push down, and then back, particularly at new highs, right? This is a much easier trade location to take than this is. Um, and I would suggest that um, I, I can suggest that I'll probably be looking for this if we push really strongly. I'd rather miss the top than get run over uh, with no rotations down. I need to see probably at least one um, five to ten point rotation before trying to short an NQ today. Okay, Apple, I believe it's Apple news that's goosing the market. <clears throat> and um, Apple has marked the top, but not necessarily in the morning when we're getting news. Um, so, one more item. Let's look at the downside uh, perspective on NQ. By the way, NQ has been leading the market, so I would, even if you're not trading it, I would keep an eye on it, right? What do we need to see to get a downside move? Well, first, um, this will become, if we get above it before the open here in the next couple of minutes, this will become pre-market resistance, right? Which will then be support the first time down. So, I'm going to want to see it trade below this area. And then truly, I need to get it back into yesterday's range and below yesterday's high. If I can get it back into the range underneath gap fill and then have it the inability for it to rise back above, right? Um, I would assume the possibility of a trap with a tight stop. Again, that's a hard trade to take for most traders, right? You want a big extension. And if we get that, it's certainly possible to trade back down into the white zone. Again, I would expect responsive buyers at the white zone to push us back up. And in this scenario, we would, um, by the way, on both ES and NQ, if we come in here, uh, I would expect it to go back to balance unless we get back above and hold, right? And then we could certainly get a drive back up at the end of the day um, uh, into options expiration. That's That would be my scenario. I'd be surprised if we get below the white zone, and it would change if we do that. It would change the scenario for me, certainly if we get below yesterday's low. It would change the scenario. I don't expect to see that <clears throat> with the strength. I would expect to see buyers step back in as we push as we push down. So I think that gives a pretty clear expectation of what I'm looking for. Again, right now I'm going to assume that we're going to open with an open drive, and I'm going to wait to see that fail before I get overly aggressive on the short, or I'm going to want to see a big fat stretch. Please keep in mind my philosophy: no one day matters. If we're, we're contra traders. It's hard to contra trade a trend day up, and it's just fine to say, I'm going to skip this day. I don't need to risk my capital until I see some balance come into the market again. So, that being said, give me just one second here.
<clears throat> I want to go over, I'm pretty much done with the scenario of what it'll look like for the day. I want to go through two things. First of all, what it would look like if we break out, right, from previous experience, and also take a look at the balance of the range. Okay, on the volume profiles, um, on ES, right, first of all, on the 24-hour, the first area that I see that should provide us pretty good support is all the way back down at the bottom, down here, just past 1820, right? I would expect to find responsive buyers the first time in here. If we don't get that, then that 1804 to 1806 still needs to be tested, bigger picture, right? On the upside, we are on the top end of balance right here, and we're going to open right on the edge. If you'll notice, with the exception of this one close right here, all these closes are taking are taking uh, have been closing below this level right here we're right on the edge right which puts us at 1837 so it's certainly possible that we're opening and we get an open drive up and a breakout like this right this is the last little hurdle and there's not a lot of there's not a lot holding us there right <clears throat> if we look on the same thing with the daily chart right I apologize, my voice is going. I'm doing the best I can, guys. Um, if we look at the daily chart, again, this is where the closes are. Um, this was the this is the highest close we had, just over 1840. But the majority of the closes, the high closes, took place right here, again at that 1837 level. So, in order for this range to hold, right, we're going to want to see a close below this level. Otherwise, we have a strong possibility for a breakout, right? With this still being the bottom now it's certainly possible that we break out close above but then before i get overly active to the short side i'm going to want to see a close or a move back down into the range right to test the lower end otherwise it could look like this you'll notice going back over here this was the high close area right in here right we closed above on a um well, I would only say it was a short squeeze, but this was Fed Day right here, right? And we closed just below. The next day we opened just above this level, right? And look, we had an open drive up, and it started a series of days where we were breaking out to the upside. <clears throat> when did this pattern end? This pattern ended when we stopped one timing, right? We still had one more day to the upside, but we went into an area of balance from there, right? As you can see, we started at one time on the day time frame right <clears throat> so we'd want to see that pattern continue and i'd want to see that break just like i did right here before assuming that we're going to push back down to the bottom end of the range and again as my friend raj pointed out 1830 up to um, 1850 right is where the majority of the options uh, are the open interest is lying in the options and friday is expiration by the way a lot of the expiration takes place um going into Thursday afternoon with squaring positions, and then very early Friday. There's not much left by the end of the day Friday, unless they unless they um, bust where they're trying to, um, they'll try to draw a magnet and they'll try to close it at a certain point where the majority of the options uh, will go out worthless. If they bust those brackets, um, the options traders get uh, are forced to come in and it can create a big drive up or down if that occurs, but it's rare. Those guys are good. They don't miss very often. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to, oh, okay. So this scenario is possible right here today. And so we're going to look for those clues um, that are available to us. I want to go look at NQ really quick. And I believe the market is just about to open. So if you have to drop off, no problem. Um, by the way, just as a coaching cue, I am sick today. I'm aware that my energy is lower. I'm going to be trading one quarter of what I normally trade. When you're sick, you tend to make not as good a decision. You tend to be a little bit slower, and you tend to miss things just because you're mentally tired or your body's tired. So I protect myself by lowering my trade size, right? I don't get my ass kicked and feel like shit at the same time. <clears throat> so um, moving back over here, um, looking at the NQ, um, it's not as, as, um, it doesn't weigh as strongly on the, 
NQ as it does ES, the 24 hour chart that is. But all of this was really poorly auctioned yesterday, right? And I would expect at some point in the future, that can be tomorrow, that can be six months from now, it can be a year from now, but that we'll come in and re auction this area, right? And then this area is the only area where we have that we were well auctioned, right? And uh, as you can tell, if you look carefully at the NQ chart, even that's not very prominent. We really don't have anything till right down here and then right in here. Again, you can see we can have really poorly auctioned areas and you can just simply never come back to auction it. It doesn't have to do it. <clears throat> this is the top of the range right here. Again, looking at the closes on the daily. Um, you'll look that all the closes took the majority of the closes have all taken place right in this area um, excuse me in the last couple days at 3560 right so at 3560 is going to be key if we can't get back below it right with the exception of yesterday's close this has been the highest close we've had in a couple of days right before that all the closes were still focused in this area right here with the exception of this one day, right? And you can see how it poked its head out and failed. The difference between what took place here and what's taking place right here, right now in the open, is that when we broke off of this, we actually had a pretty good base right here. As a matter of fact, amazingly, it looks almost identical to, here, let's clear this. This looks pretty damn close to being identical to this, right? Not perfect, this actually has more days so if we break off of a base here, right, it certainly could launch us higher from here, right? So again, I'm cautious on the short. I want to see it back below. Um, really, I would like to see it back below 3560, but certainly we have to get it below prior day's close and prior day's high to have any shot at a downside move. And obviously, NQ has been going up on its updates much faster than it's been going down. So... Um, I think that pretty much covers what I'm looking at big picture. Um, I will put up some uh, trend lines from yesterday. You know, we can look and see, but I don't want to extend this for too long. So I'll post um, I'll post some trend line pictures in there. But again, trend lines are just trend lines. Just draw a line underneath. It was straight up yesterday. You'll have an idea of which trend line needs to break and probably be retested from the bottom side in order for us to push down. I still think this area is very key. To get underneath otherwise buyers have it i wouldn't step in the way we're going to watch for an opening drive and uh i'll update from there guys thank y'all <clears throat> i think my voice is about to go on me so have a great day we'll talk later